They're ringing that bell. There's a, there's a grave anxiety surrounding Wall Street at this moment. And here we go. It's 9.30 Eastern time on this Thursday morning, and the market has opened, and immediately it's down over four, 750 points. That's 2.25%. So right from the start, you've got almost all of the Dow 30 stocks uh, in the red. One of them's a winner. Look, is, is that she Chevron? She of course, Chevron, with oil prices going to $100 a barrel. Chevron's doing well. The rest of the Dow 30 plunging into the red, and we're down 800 points now for the Dow Industrials. Show me the S&P 500, please. That is down 2.5 percent, a similar loss to the Dow. And the Nasdaq, I'm expecting the biggest loss of all, and there it is, three and one third percent down for the Nasdaq. It's back to 12,600, a loss of 440 points as we speak. That means big tech has got to be really way down, and it is. I'm going to go through this for you. Microsoft is down seven bucks. Apple is down seven bucks. Alphabet is down 45. Amazon is down 80. Meta platforms, as Susan just told us, below $200 now at 191, down six bucks. Uh, those are plunging big tech stock prices straight down. All right, Susan, come back in again. Anything else to add to this? Do you want to talk about to oil majors? Because if there was one sector that's outperforming today, probably two, I'll throw in defense as well. Those are the two sectors with oil. We know Brent crossing 100 bucks. You had yesterday, so far this week at least, Bank of America calling $120 a barrel for Brent crude, 110 in the second quarter, according to other estimates. And as you know, that helps rally the energy and the oil majors, which have been the best performing sector so far this year, best performing sector last year. Also, if we can throw in, by the way, the defense sector, I saw Northrop Grumman, yeah. the BAE's outperformance today because there might be some need for more of this heavy artillery and weaponry in this ongoing invasion in Ukraine. And then, uh, you know, let's take a look at Bitcoin. I know you did that earlier, but I'll tell you this, you know, cryptos, which has been called the digital gold, this hedge against bad government policy, inflation, that obviously that correlation has clearly broken down and it trades more in line with stock markets right now. But here's something that, you know, just from a political angle that you might find interesting, Stu, is that last night you had the Russian-born Canadian uh, bred founder of Ethereum, Vitalik, who says that he's on the Ukraine side. He says he's not neutral, Ether is. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not had any, I don't know whether that's had much impact on Ethereum itself. It's way sub below uh, 33000 bucks. 2429 we have at the moment. Now then. Um, but I'll say this about crypto, is that despite the fact that you know, we have had this uh, big decline in Bitcoin prices now at 35,000. We're not, we haven't tested the lows that we saw in the summer of last year when Bitcoin went sub 30,000. So it's still holding sure. above those levels. Same thing for Ethereum as well. So there might be an ongoing fear trade taking place right now, but I don't, I don't want to call this a crash because it's not a market crash. Right. We're still above levels that we saw roughly just about six months ago. Can we put Tesla up on the screen, please? I want to see if it's dropped below 700 bucks. No, it has no. not. It's down five at 728. Why is Tesla well, under so much they're pressure? They're getting a, a bit of a buffer, too, I would say. It probably would be a lot worse for Tesla, which I think I saw almost down about 8% in the pre-market this morning. And, you know, there are reports that Tesla, which has gotten a boost from their Shanghai plant, it looks like they are set to work on a new, a second Shanghai plant as soon as next month. So that means they're going to increase and double production there in China. And they're looking to increase production at its current plant to 1 million. And here's something, Stu, is that that with Elon Musk losing double what the next three combined have lost in the ultra uber rich list in the past week, he was the last member of that $200 billion rich club. So there are no more $200 billion billionaires in the world now because of this global sell-off. Well, I'm sure Bernie Sanders and Senator Elizabeth Warren will be utterly delighted to hear that, but uh, <laughs> some stockholders apparently will not. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ali, I don't want to get off on a tangent here. Deal with Alibaba real fast because well, we they reported. Well, we have to because, look, every company that reported is, is really just getting hammered today. So look at Alibaba. I mean, this was a, a terrible report card. Worst growth for the company's sales since its 2014 IPO. Sales came in really soft, and they're forecasting what they call uncertainty during the last three months of the year because of the ongoing Beijing clampdown on big tech. And, of course, Alibaba, Jack Ma, has been... Uh, 
part of that, caught up in that, uh, that Beijing, that uh, anti-tech march from the Chinese government. Uh, can we throw up the defense uh, stocks again, please? Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, BAE, and that yep. lot, because I'm looking for winners this morning, and the only winners that I can find are defense stocks, and the reason are quite obvious. Oil, when you've got defense, a war yep. going on over there, you can expect military equipment to be in demand. And there you have it. Northrop Grumman is up 2.5%, Lockheed up 1.6%. Raytheon was up earlier, now it's down a bit. Mm. And General Dynamics is also on the downside. I'm looking for winners, Susan. Can we, can we try Moderna as well? Because I thought that sure. was a really, really strong report card. Ah. There's some green for you because Moderna says that they expect at least $10 billion in vaccine sales this year. Biggest beat in fourth quarter earnings in the company's history. They're raising their COVID sales guidance by at least $2 billion this year. And they're hinting that most people over the age of 18 around the world will need a three vaccine dosage. So that means better sales for them. Well, that's one standout, isn't it, which has nothing to do with the price of oil or war in Europe and all the rest of it. It's a vaccine company, and up it goes. Yeah. And what else have we got? Shall we have a look at, let me, show me all the Dow winners. Let's go through those, the Dow Hard winners. Hard to find, Are, are I'm there sure. any? Yes. Uh, no. Not a single uh, item of all the Dow 30 stocks, not a single one of them is on the upside. Um, S&P 500 winners. Well, there you've got Moderna. Uh, I see Qantas Live services. Nations Live Nation. That's Anything that's nothing to do with inflation and oil and war may be going up just a little bit. NASDAQ winners. Are there any? Uh, yes, uh, one. American Electric Power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, of course, is a utility. Right. And they're up because they've got pricing power. Well, let I guess me now. ask you this, Go. Stu, because you've seen this type of market volatility over the decades, and obviously this new knee jerk reaction when it comes to confrontations around the world and geopolitics. You know, a lot of people would say that if you compare this to the bear market that we saw in 2020, and by the way, and there are tens of millions of new investors in the market, do you think that this might be a buying? opportunity? Well, I'd go back to the first Gulf War. Uh, prior to that war, stocks went way down. Yeah. And as soon as that war broke out, stocks went straight back up again. I think it was probably the same in 2001 with 9-11. Yep. Stocks went straight down and then recovered very quickly thereafter. I'm not saying that the same thing will happen here because this is a different type of military confrontation. But history could show us that you get, the, as you said, the knee-jerk reaction when the war starts and then a rebound later. I'm not suggesting that will happen now. What do you think, Susan? Well, this time around, and I'll just compare it to recent history of what happened just about two years ago when COVID hit in March 2020. Yep. You saw that market drop, yep. and then it was the shortest bear market in history with a recovery just a few weeks later. But back then, we had money printing and D.C. having the dry powder to be able to cut interest rates, print money. This time around, with interest rates already near zero, and we're looking at interest rate increases in a matter of weeks. Also, yep. the money printing machines have been fanning inflation. I think D.C. and that stimulus rebound might be a little handcuffed this time around. Yeah, I think so. Looking for that immediate reaction is probably uh, not what we should be looking for at this particular moment, in my personal opinion. You agree with that, Brian? Oh, wait, you have inflation. That, that, that is the name of the game difference between every precedent we've talked about here, and that's what's going to hold this down.